Good morning, America. How are you? Monday morning rail. We'll be 500 miles before the day is done. They call me the city of New Orleans. Hi, I'm Denny Yelsma, and I'm at the world famous Jacksonville Terminal Railroad Museum in beautiful Jacksonville, Florida, where the sun always shines and running trains is an absolute pleasure. It's Monday morning rail, and you know what we do on Monday? You guessed it, we do show and tell. And before we go to show and tell, this show and tell is always brought to you by Yelsma Graphics, the embroidery people that make all the railroad embroidered shirts, jackets, just like the shirt that I have on. So all you need to do is go to yelsma.com on the internet and you'll see over 1,500 logos. We sell hats, caps, shirts, you name it, we'll do for clubs. Uh, we have a lot of railroad prints. Just go to yelsma.com and you will uh, shop to your heart's content. Now, I'd like to say thank you for all the people that stopped by the the land show that was the last weekend and once again we we're just overwhelmed uh greg turn was down there uh better known as number one uh we, ju we just absolutely amazed at all the people that uh, watch our show and follow us and we just want to say thank you and with that said show and hell starts right now Monday morning rails starts right now, show and tell, and I think we have a great and exciting show. You know, uh, we do this show and tell because we bring our models and we like to show them off, and uh, today we have a very exciting show. Uh, we're going to have an upcoming session that's going to talk about the Jacksonville Terminal Railroad, uh, uh, the uh, Prime Osborne. Uh, center and uh, Greg Turn is going to do that and uh, you've seen Greg Turn uh, at, at the shows uh, he has nice glossy photos that you could sign and that he will sign for you and uh, even personalize it so that show is coming up in uh, a couple of weeks make sure that you uh, watch it for it and uh, it'll be very exciting and you'll learn a lot now with all that being said let's start with show and tell once again i think it's exciting i'm going to talk about a, about four or five items that uh, uh i just been wanting to talk about and and uh, some of the fans have said hey why don't you do this uh i just had an email from a guy saying hey can you do a uh a copper uh, country uh, uh limited train and i just happen to have a copper uh, country uh, limited and i'll be doing that uh, in a few weeks but the first thing that I want to show you is a Pennsylvania brass observation car. This is an old Balboa, and a lot of people kind of discount some of the old Balboas. Uh, but when you uh, add a lot of detail to these cars, they really come out pretty nice. This happens to be uh, an old Balboa, and uh, we've cleaned it up. We've added extra. I put a divider in here. I put some people in the... Uh, 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 end and you can see I've added jewels on both sides so it represents uh, this uh, car came to Florida a lot and Atlantic Coastline had a rule that all the end cars had to have a red uh, warning light on it and so uh, the Pennsylvania cars had to have that on it but this was a uh, old Balboa that brought in in the 60s uh, one of the first pieces of brass that I ever owned was a Balboa a Union Pacific. Uh, well, no, it was a Great Northern uh, set, and uh, they used to sell for ten bucks. Uh, they're very economical today. You buy them on eBay very cheap, uh, but you gotta uh, rework them, and uh, 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 really makes a nice car. So, the next item I want to show you is uh, it's another old brass model. And uh, Elko was uh, kind of the second generation of uh, brass engines. And uh, this here is a uh, Elko uh, DL640. Uh, and 
it had foam damage. And if you know anything about foam damage, when they're in a box, it was just covered with all yellow foam, sticky. It was uh, really a mess. It's, you know, like in your closets, you'll have those white racks and how sticky they are. The foam gets the same thing. This thing was an absolute mess. And uh, uh, I had to tear it completely apart and I, uh, I cleaned all the foam, and as you can see, uh, there's no foam uh, damage on it uh, whatsoever. Really cleaned up nice. This is DC, uh, really runs nice. Once again, I, I literally had to take everything apart from the gears to, to you name it and oil it all up, and it, it's uh, turned out to be a very nice uh, engine. The next car that I have that I want to talk about is another old brass car, and it was nickel plate products. And they uh, made a lot of Milwaukee stuff. And this is a Milwaukee 1948 Hiawatha version, but it's highly detailed. It has the metal bars in for the RPO. It has the RPO hook. Uh, it has nice diaphragms. Uh, when this first car was introduced, it had full diaphragms, not just into the center, but the full. And uh, this is just, a, I just think it's just such a gorgeous car. And here you, you take a very economical uh, uh, brass car and uh, detail it and put the proper uh, coloring and, and on the different sections, it really makes it to be a nice car. And this is uh, uh, just absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, these cars sold for uh, $20, $30, uh, 40 dollars 50 60 years ago, and the new cars are selling for like a $1,000 or more. And so uh, uh, Coachyard just uh, brought in a bunch of seaboard cars and uh, when they say, well, the brass market is dead and all that, uh, Yelp Graphics, we sold over 46 brass coachyard of the seaboard uh, streamlined cars. And we got one left. So uh, if you want a beautiful car, give me a call. <laughs> the uh, next uh, uh, engine that I want to talk about is a... Uh, uh, train World exclusive. This is a Broadway Limited of the Lehigh Valley, the John Wilkes. They had two famous trains, John Wilkes and the Black Diamond. And uh, they ran from Buffalo to uh, uh, the, uh, the port of New Jersey, right across from Manhattan. And what they did, this is a brass hybrid, and uh, Broadway uh, painted this uh, engine in the John Wilkes, but it's actually uh, a Santa Fe Blue Goose. And you know, I first thought, oh man, that's, uh, that wouldn't be the same. When you take a photograph and look at the two engines, there, it's pretty, I could see why they made the decision to make this a, a John Wilkes. The uh, tender is just a little longer, but otherwise, from the shrouding and that, it's just a gorgeous, beautiful engine. And so, uh, uh, the brass purists kind of poo-hoo these things, but I think this is a very nice rendition of the John Wilkes, and it's very reasonable uh, uh, priced. And it's just, uh, um, it runs, it has DCC, it smokes and makes noise. It's just uh, all the things that us railroad guys love, and uh, beautiful lighting, and it's just a really a, a, a nice uh, engine. Now the next engine is something that uh, I have really, uh, really proud of. And this is another nickel plate product engine that was made. This engine has got to be 50 years or, or, or I, I would say f uh, at least 50 years old. Uh, and that is the Chicago Northwestern uh, Hudson uh, 464 and uh, streamlined with a shroud on it. And uh, this is DC. Uh, I may uh, put DCC in it, probably will, and change out the motor, but it's still really a beautiful engine, beautiful paint job, has an oscillating uh, headlight. And it's just uh, 
uh, a gorgeous, uh, a gorgeous, gorgeous paint job. And it runs smooth. And some of these older engines, if you just take time and uh, really tweak them, uh, you know, today we're so used to opening up the box and just putting it on the track and hoping that it runs. And, and even with today's modern technology, you still have to tweak a lot of the stuff, especially like with the Walters cars. They say, ready to run. Well, that's not true. I know at our club right here at the world famous Terminal Railroad Museum, we tweak everything to make sure it's exactly uh, perfect and that's why everything runs so well here. But I just wanted to show the show and tell, uh, the uh, different pieces that uh, what you could do with a lot of older uh, uh, models. You could buy them very, very economical on uh, eBay. And sad to say, a lot of the guys my age are passing on to the big roundhouse and uh, in the sky and uh, their wives get rid of it right away. So uh, you could buy a lot of the older stuff uh, you could tweak it and play with it, and you could really make them uh, run. And that's the way it is at the world famous Jacksonville Terminal Railroad Museum, where running trains is an absolute pleasure. And that's show and tell today.